Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video. I will be starting work on a new table that I recently designed. The table consists of unique looking tapered legs and a drawer box and drawer that rest on rails. The build videos will be broken into several videos and will be given away for free as well as the SketchUp file. And if you'd like to build the table along with me, you should be able to extract all of the dimensions for the build from the SketchUp file. You'll find a link to the SketchUp file in the description of the video below. And I hope that you all stick around for the entire build series for this one of a kind table. Anytime I work on a table, I always like to start with the legs first. And for those, I'm gonna use a piece of eight quarter cherry. With the freshly sawn face against the fence of the joiner, I'm gonna flatten one adjoining face before I take these over to the table saw and rip them square. I let all of my legs rest overnight. Now at the joiner, I'm gonna flatten and square two adjoining faces and the opposite two faces I'll take to their final thickness at the planer. Now is the time that I'll look at each face of the leg and I'll pick which face I want to have the joinery on because it's those faces that I like to have face jointed at the joiner. To help me keep it straight as to which face came off the joiner, I make an arrow pointing towards that face. So these two faces are square right off of the joiner and the opposite two faces I'll take down to their final thickness at the planer. Now that I have the legs dimensioned to thickness and length, I can start working on the rails. Now that I have these boards ripped to rough width and cut the rough length, I need to flatten one face at the joiner. And so that I can see my progress as I'm flattening at the joiner, I like to take a pencil and just scribble all over the face. That way I know that once all the pencil marks are gone, the board is completely flat. The next thing I need to do is lay out for joinery for my legs. Now, I was asked by my Patreon members if I would show my joinery layout process in an upcoming video. So I decided to use this video to show you guys how I do that. Now, the first step that I do is I take all of the faces that are gonna be adjoined through a rail. I have them facing up and I put a clamp on each one on each side and I make sure that the ends of the legs are nice and flush and I'll make a little tick mark where I want the rail to start. So now I need to make room for the tenon shoulder. And in this case, I have a half inch tenon shoulder. So I'll mark up a half inch from that first tick mark and I'll make another tick mark further up. So from this tick mark, I'll scratch a line all the way across to the remaining legs. So that'll be the start or the bottom part of the mortise. So in this case, the mortise is gonna come up an inch and a half and I'll have another half inch tenon shoulder on this side. In order to mark for the other end of the mortise, I'll take my rail and I'll put it on the first tick mark that I made and I'll make another tick mark for the other side of the rail. Now I'll measure down from this tick mark a half an inch for the tenon shoulder again. 
and then I'll subscribe a line from this tick mark all the way across, and that will define my mortise. So these two lines will define the length of the mortise. So I still need to define the position of the mortise in this direction. So in this case, I'm gonna have the mortise exactly in the center. So I'll just use a digital caliper and I'll measure over from one end, one side of the leg on center and I'll make a mark. And then I'll use this mark to line up the router bit of my mortiser to make the mortise end to end in between these two lines. Now you could use a marking gauge and scratch a line on center from end to end of the mortise. But uh, in this case, because I'm using the horizontal mortiser, it's really not necessary. All I really need is this one point to line up the router bit of the mortiser. I'm gonna be using loose tenon joinery for this piece. So that means I need to make end grain mortises in all my rails. And because I know I want half inch tenon shoulders, I'm gonna use a half inch brass setup bar to mark the location of the mortise. Now these mortises will be on center across the width of the rail. The side rails are wider than the rails that are in the front and back of the piece, and that's because the side rails are going to be later curved, so they're going to be shaped later. So when I mark for the end grain mortises in the side rails, I'm going to only use the brass setup bar and make a mark on one side of the rail. So these mortises are going to be offset. So now I'll just measure for the length of the mortise and I'll make another mark and that'll define this mortise in the end grain. With the table base dry assembled, I'm gonna stop part one here. I still need to shape all the legs, shape the side rails, and make the drawer box and drawer. So I hope you guys will come back for part two.